Hello, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sex. It's a great uh, to have you. Um, we very much appreciate you joining us uh, live from uh, from New York City, as I understand it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I don't need to uh, introduce you to our audience because you you are one of those rare. Uh, outstanding individuals who do not really need introduction to us. Um, your excellent uh, credentials have been well known, uh, especially here in Korea. We are so excited about uh, having you over, over here today, this morning. Uh, so for next about 15 minutes or so, um, rather than me making any sort of intervention in between, I would like to let you uh, go ahead uh, with uh, opening a keynote speech. Uh, floor is yours, Jeff. Chairman John, thank you so, so much for the honor to be with IGE. This is a great institution. Uh, I've known it since the very start uh, when uh, Chairman Sakong uh, began, and uh, I'm so impressed with the, its growth and contributions and really very delighted to be speaking with you at this moment when we are pondering a fast changing world, uh, a world uh, beset by many crises, but also many important possibilities and opportunities. Uh, and my friends in Korea know that for the uh, nearly 40 years that I've been coming to Korea, uh, I have watched a, a country uh, go from one success to the next and show the way for the world in so many important areas. And I speak to you tonight, uh, my time and morning your time, with continued great optimism for Korea's uh, ability to help the whole world to find a way forward uh, at a moment of uh, great complexity. Well, we're, we're all in uh, multiple crises right now. Uh, just as we speak, uh, New York and uh, the Northeast is being buffeted by strong winds uh, and uh, gale force uh, thunderstorms that are the remnants of a massive hurricane that hit the United States yesterday and flooded much of the state of Louisiana, killed many people, uh, but exemplify the kind of climate crisis that we are facing all over the world. This was a category four storm. Once again, we found, not surprisingly, we're not ready for such events. The power went out for millions of people many deaths. It will take weeks, in fact, according to the state of Louisiana, for the power to be brought on for some people. This in the middle of a COVID pandemic and a heat wave. At the same time, uh, we have some of the biggest forest fires in our history in the west of the United States. We don't know whether these fires are going to come into the city of Lake Tahoe, uh, but they're all around uh, human settlements, massive fires that, of course, are a reflection of the dangers of climate change, because we've not seen these mega fires before. We had a heat wave in the Pacific region that was unprecedented. Korea had a quite hot July as well, which for the world was the hottest single month in the record uh, of temperatures uh, of the planet since the late 19th century. We have a pandemic, uh, by the way, that uh, is now causing about 160,000 cases per day on average, roughly 100 times what Korea has because the Korean people are following protocols the Korean people are acting with responsibility. I wish I could say the same for the United States. Uh, we have fist fights and uh, huge 
bickering over things as basic as the sociality of wearing face masks. We have a massive anti-vaccine uh, movement, which is polarizing the country. And then in the midst of all of this, <laughs> we have the uh, utter debacle in Afghanistan. So the United States is overwhelmed uh, in ways that, thank God, Korea is not. What, in my view, is the basis of Korea's fundamental strengths? Uh, it is culture. It's education. It's the desire, and it's been an ardent desire for decades, for solid social achievement supported by strong and effective government. And this, I think, is the hallmark of the way forward in the days and years ahead. I have six things, Mr. Chairman, on, on my agenda as being required for what lies ahead. First is high quality education. What's really fundamental about the US situation is that basically half, half the society is poorly educated now. And that's why we are so culturally divided. Korea, on the other hand, has maintained a standard of educational excellence, scoring at the top of the global comparative uh, performance, the so-called PISA standards. And I would urge you keep up that as the fundamental uh, guidepost of society. It's of course core to Korean values, uh, but I think it's the key to societal success anywhere. A well-educated population that is ready for the changes ahead. The second point of my list of six is innovation. As uh, Governor Lee mentioned and Chairman Co mentioned in their remarks, this is a moment of tremendous technological change. We need it, given all of the challenges that we are facing, environmental and social. And the capacity to innovate is crucial for economic well-being, for global competitiveness, and for sheer problem solving. Now, Korea ranks number one in the world, number one or number two, in the proportion of national income devoted to research and development. This is, again, a phenomenal strength. It is built upon that strong educational base and it is key for Korea's success, not only riding the technological change, but leading the technological change. The third point that I would completely agree with Governor Lee is that the digital transformations will power all of the changes ahead because the digital revolution, now really about 80 years in existence, but accelerating with artificial intelligence, with 5G, with increased computational capacities, is driving change in every scientific area and every economic sector. And it is because of digitalization that Korea was able to surmount the COVID pandemic so effectively to bring new applications online, to move to uh, online work in many, many sectors, uh, and to be able to innovate so rapidly and successfully. So universal digital access to services, Korea being uh, in the forefront of uh, microprocessing uh, and both the hardware and the software of the digital age is a phenomenal, uh, phenomenally important uh, dimension. The fourth area, of course, is the green uh, transformation, which is essential. We have gone very far in wrecking the climate system. 
we are already more than 1.2 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial level. My climatology uh, colleagues, especially Dr. James Hansen, who I regard as uh, the world's leading climatologist, together with Dr. Lee, head of the IPCC, thank you very much for Korea's contribution, says that we have accelerated the warming to more than 0.3 degrees Celsius per decade. This is alarming. There is not only no time to lose, we have lost the safety zone. The world will be in climate crisis in the years ahead. And therefore, we must move to a decarbonized energy system without any delay. For Korea, this is challenging. What will be the base of zero carbon energy? Uh, how to integrate the hydrogen economy? Uh, how to uh, tap uh, offshore wind, solar, hydropower, which has some availability? and how to integrate into a regional energy system are paramount questions for Korea. But thanks goodness, Korea has adopted the Korean Green Deal based on digital and green platforms. And I would urge that in addition to the energy and industrial transformations that we need, that Korea also champion the sustainable land use the biodiversity conservation, the reductions of pollution and circular economy that are also vital to the green transformation. Korea's Green Deal, the European Green Deal are hallmarks in this uh, direction. And I really look forward to the deepening of Korea's Green Deal because you'll be showing not only Korea how to move forward, but the whole world how to move forward effectively. My fifth point is that success in all of this requires strong regional cooperation. This is not easy in Northeast Asia. There remain so many historical uh, difficulties of the three major uh, powers in the region, Korea, China, and Japan. But when I look at the three from outside, what I see is a remarkable powerhouse of capacity, probably the most concentrated technological capability in the whole world. I really yearn for cooperation in Northeast Asia because if China, Korea, Japan can work together, can overcome real and significant historical differences and experiences and bitternesses, but work together going forward, it, there's no limit to what the three together can accomplish. And the three countries together, in my view, need each other because you will share markets, innovation, transformation, energy systems, power grids, standards, standard setting for the world that will be enormously beneficial. And I hope, uh, I know I don't mean to be naive, but I hope when the three countries work so effectively together, this will also help finally to put an end to the divisions on the Korean Peninsula itself, because everybody yearns for a peaceful solution to Korea's own problems uh, with the, your neighbor to the north. So I believe that in every part of the world, we need to finally put an end to the post-World War II legacies we need to put an end to the Cold War legacies, and we need regional cooperation. It's hard for me to imagine any country in the region solving the problems on its own. I am very much against the Cold War rattling by the United States politicians that we need to confront China. I think this is a huge mistake. 
We need cooperation. We need uh, dialogue. We need symmetry. We need serious working relations. We need economic and technological integration because this is the way forward for a safer world and a greener world and a more sustainable world. And especially with Northeast Asia's phenomenal talents, if these uh, divisions of the past can be overcome, uh, again, I think the region will just lead the world in showing how a digital and green recovery can be accomplished. I'd also add that I'm a great fan of the Regional Comprehensive Partnership, because putting together the three countries of Northeast Asia with the 10 of ASEAN, with Australia and New Zealand, is truly a remarkable combination of countries. And that whole grouping together could provide uh, so much dynamism and so much transformation and so much benefit for humanity in the years ahead. And with the whole 15 RCEP countries working together, creating the hydrogen economy, creating an integrated smart grid, creating the first major region that has reached 5G and soon will reach 6G technologies. Uh, I think these solutions will move forward dramatically. And I would add that since the G20 next year will be hosted by Indonesia, this is really a great chance for RCEP to take a lead as an integrated true partnership to help put solutions in front of the entire world. And finally, let me say as my sixth point in these brief remarks, global cooperation is essential. I'm trying to say that to the United States, my own country, the government every day. Stop the divisions, stop Cold War thinking, speak with Russia, with China, with Iran, with other countries so that we can find common solutions. Look at this uh, chaotic exit from Afghanistan. Every country needs a stable Afghanistan now, not a descent into chaos. But there's no way that there can be a stable Afghanistan unless the United States is working together, not just with the G7, which is thousands of kilometers away, but with China, which has a border with Afghanistan, with Russia, with Iran, with Pakistan, with other countries the United States sometimes doesn't want to talk to. But we need cooperation to solve such problems. We're going to need cooperation to solve all of the big problems. We should be cooperating far more closely than we are on stopping COVID. The Korean government wisely said to the United States, please share mRNA technology because Korea has the capacity to scale up its own vaccine development, but please share the technologies. The US has so far said no. Believe me, I'm pressing that it says yes, because these technologies are not the purview of individual private companies. They were developed with funding by the US government, by other governments. They should be in the hands of all of humanity for the common safety of humanity. So I'm very happy that Korea has said it's going to build vaccine capacity and put billions of dollars of investment into that. And I wanna make sure that all possible technologies for the benefit of humankind are available to Korea and to other producers around the world in order to accomplish the end of this pandemic. The same logic applies for the other challenges, for ending climate change, for protecting biodiversity, for ending extreme poverty, for helping poor countries to become part of the digital world, not to fall away as we move to the digital world. 
all of this requires cooperation. All of this requires transfers of know-how. All of this requires goodwill. All of this requires finance. And all of this, therefore, in my conclusion, requires Korea's success, its inspiration, and its global role and leadership. Thank you so much for letting me share a few thoughts with you uh, this morning at IGE. Thank you for this uh, important uh, symposium that you're holding. Uh, and let me say uh, how much I look forward to traveling again so that I can uh, see friends uh, in Korea in person uh, in the months ahead. Thank you again.